Hey everyone, welcome back to Up and Adam Channel 2, where we are bringing you all of the extra content. Now, apparently Lisa Vanderpump is responding to Peter Madrigal, who is, who is not even former sir manager, he's still sir manager. Um, he came out claiming that TomTom Tom was going through a rebrand. He also had a few other claims, but we're going to talk about them. And Ariana Maddox is, well, last night she went on Watch What Happens Live and she spoke, kind of on the Tom lawsuit that was dropped against her, but also on Sheena. So we're going to get into it. Before we do, you guys know how this works. If you haven't already, go ahead, pop off in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and let's jump right in. Like we do it. All right, guys, where do we begin? Probably right here. <laughs> All right. Thank you to Reality Blurb. Lisa Vanderpump shut down the idea that Tom Tom is being rebranded as Pump and explained the bar's nod to her former restaurant during an interview just yesterday. Now, after Peter Madrigal spoke of a pump sign at the venue and suggested that Lisa may have bought Tom and Tom out of their joint venture, well, she denied that she's turning Tom Tom into Pump, which shut its doors in 2023. When we closed Pump, we moved some of the staff and our chef to TomTom, Tom, as they were so good. So we've been affectionately calling the back garden of TomTom Tom the Pump Garden. But that happened months ago. I hadn't thought about rebranding it at all, but thanks for the idea, Peter. Now with Vanderpump Rules on pause, ahead of its 12th season, Lisa is focused on opening her new restaurants, including Pinkies and in Sin City. We've been hard at work on Pinkies at the Flamingo and Las Vegas, and does he want to change the name of that too? <laughs> On the August 12th episode of the Sarah Fraser show, Peter noted that Tom Tom, well, the sign no longer seemed to be on the front of the bar and claimed Lisa was rebranding the bar. She said, So when you walk into the building formerly known as Tom Tom, you walk in and there's a gate that says pump above it. Peter also said that he thought that she already did when he asked if Lisa bought out Sandoval and Schwartz in the wake of the backlash of. Scandaball, which led to poor online reviews and threats of boycotts. But even now, she didn't she didn't answer that, I don't believe. Nearly a year after Sandoval and Raquel's romance was exposed, Sandoval continues to face dire circumstances within his businesses. As Peter explained, his and Schwartz's other bar, Schwartz and Sandy's, which opened back in 2022, is reportedly a ghost town. Um, she didn't say that she didn't buy them out. And honestly, she probably bought them out. What does it take to buy them both out of 1%? 50 grand, 100 grand. That's nothing to Lisa Vanderpump. That's that's a new watch. She's like, oh my God, look at my pearl watch. This was 100 grand. She doesn't care. But now moving on, moving on, because it can't all be about Lisa. It's not about the pasta. We're going over here to Ariana Maddox. Thank you to page six. Ariana Maddox finally addressed Tom Sandoval's bombshell lawsuit. Andy Cohen asked her about her ex-boyfriend suing her on last night's episode of Watch What Happens Live. And she simply said that was a really bad day. Now, when Andy speculated that her bad days are over, she laughed and said that would be great. She dated Sandoval for nearly a decade with their relationship ending over his months-long affair with fellow Vanderpump Rules cast member Rachel Raquel Levis, but she discovered the infidelity by finding the videos of her on her boyfriend's phone, as we all know. Now, Raquel has since sued Ariana Maddox and Tom Sandoval. That was back in February for revenge porn, eavesdropping, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and invasion of privacy, which... Both have denied. Sandoval, however, furthered the drama last month when he sued Ariana Maddox for accessing the explicit footage without his authorization, a claim that he later dropped after alleging that he was misled by his lawyer. Andy Cohen asked Ariana on Tuesday whether she believed Sandoval's statement that he had no intention of suing her, and it was the doing of his attorney. And she kind of gave a shrug and said, I don't know. Social media users praised her for remaining a class act amid her ex's shade, calling her gracious with her answers. But one fan praised her queen response and said, she doesn't want that name uttered in her presence. Mm. 
While Ariana Maddox kept mostly quiet about the drama, her co-stars have weighed in. Katie Maloney, for her part, said on a disrespectfully podcast episode last month that she doubted Sandoval was misled into the lawsuit since he deactivated his Instagram ahead of time. I think he did know the gravity of what was going to happen. Hmm. As for Sheena, she called Sandoval shitty while speaking to her Instagram followers, and she said, what are you thinking? I think it negates any remorse that you tried to show at the reunion. Fuck off. But at this time, Ariana, Mad Ariana Maddox's lawyer blasted Sandoval for tormenting her in a statement, claiming he has clearly learned nothing. Mm. Okay. Well, since we're in the business of talking about lawsuits and whatnot, there was another lawsuit that I wanted to talk about because we've mentioned it a couple times. I don't know how much you guys have talked about it or heard about it, but it would be the Leah McSweeney Andy Cohen lawsuit. And I honestly didn't know what was going to happen with this. I really didn't. I, I didn't know if it was going to be good, bad, somewhere in between. Wasn't really sure, but now we know. Hold on. Leah McSweeney, thank you to realityt.com, is hitting back at ringmaster Andy Cohen's attempt to pause the lawsuit. Now, Leah filed a lawsuit against Andy Cohen, Bravo, NBC Universal Media, Warner Brothers, Discovery Shud Media and some show producers back in February. She accused the defendants of disability and sex discrimination and lack of a safe working environment. Leah, who's battled with alcohol, alleged that she was pressured to consume drugs and alcohol while filming season 12 of Roni. But in her filing, she made other damning allegations, such as Andy partaking in the pasta with his favorite Real Housewives. But in response, Andy denied the allegations and threatened Leah with legal action, and punitive damages unless she retracted them and apologized. He also petitioned to have the case dismissed. So Andy's petition for dismissal happened back in May, but a judge still hasn't made a ruling. And last week, his legal team made another motion, and this time they requested that the court pauses evidence gathering until the judge decides whether or not to dismiss the case. But Leah's team just provided comment, and unsurprisingly, they strongly oppose Andy's newest motion to pause the whole ordeal. Huh. Leah McSweeney's attorney said ringmaster Andy Cohen's motion is premature and should be denied. Andy asked the court to pause proceedings and evidence gathering until they rule on his dismissal request in an August 8th letter. In it, he called a majority of Leah's allegations categorically false. And according to court documents obtained by People magazine, Leah filed an opposition on August 12th. Just two days ago. Leah's team argues that Andy's motion is premature and they say that it could lead to Leah, I guess this could lead Leah to be prejudiced and that Andy has failed to establish good cause. The filing again emphasized Leah's original allegations about an unsafe work environment due to the pressures to consume drugs and alcohol. And she also expanded on her claims of sex discrimination and expressing that the workplace culture is rooted in misogyny against the female talent. Further, she listed a religious discrimination accusation. She claims that Bravo and Andy failed to accommodate her religious dietary requirements, but they accommodated non-Jewish cast members' requests for food without doing the same for her. She also asserted that she believes that network ringmaster Andy's earlier attempt to obtain punitive damages against her was not only intended to dissuade her from pursuing her claims against him, but also served as a public threat to any other Bravo cast member that, I guess decided to speak out against the ringmaster himself. It doesn't seem like Leah's ready to um, put this away anytime soon. So we're going to see how this goes. But I want to hear what you guys think. Guys, pop off in the comment section. Please don't forget to hit that notification bell. If you guys are not subscribed, get subscribed. And we will see you soon. Love you guys. Bye.